Apple just bought a new app and this might just be the end of Adobe. Let's talk about this. Pixelmator is the app that Apple just bought. It does everything that Photoshop, Illustrator, and Lightroom do in one app. But more importantly, it is only 50 buckaroos. That's it for life. One time purchase, $50 compared to Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, which is like $50. Actually, I think it's $60 a month. Here's Adobe, $60 a month for a whole Creative Cloud. If you just want Lightroom and Photoshop, it's $20 a month. I'm trying to find Illustrator. Here's Illustrator, that's $23 a month. Again, after two months or one month, depending on what you buy, you could have already bought Pixelmator for your entire life. Here's a first look. This is what Pixelmator looks like. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why Apple is doing this, what's going on. It's very interesting. And we're also gonna get a hands-on preview of Pixelmator, the app itself, in case you've never used it before. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, the Adobe lovers here are going to say, you know, just because this is Apple doesn't mean it's gonna give Adobe a run for its money. Adobe's been the industry standard since 1996 or something like that, and it's not going away. And maybe there's some truth to that, but I think that this is going to be seriously a competitor to Adobe in a lot of ways. And mainly because right now people are flocking in droves away from Adobe. This has been a terrible year for Adobe. It has been tragic, absolutely horrific to watch the past year of Adobe's PR announcements. It's been awful. It started with the AI controversy, and I've made a whole video on this up here somewhere called the end of Adobe, but essentially, Adobe used artists' work to train their AI models. People got really fed up about it. People were very disappointed in the company. They made a lot of mistakes along the way and they've been trying to save face ever since. I bring this all up because as a result, people have not been wanting to use Adobe. They've been searching for alternatives like Affinity and other apps, but there's not really many other options. And now, lo and behold, here comes Apple, our savior. The Apple ecosystem is coming down with Pixelmator and it is going to be the solution. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you, Tim Cook. <laughs> Because on top of the AI controversies, which because I mean, some people care about that and some people don't. I'll be honest, Adobe's AI tools are so good that I don't really care how they got here at this point. They are life changers. But my point is on top of the AI stuff, even for the people that don't care about the controversies, Adobe software is just bad. I don't know why it's so bad. It's buggy, it crashes, it has random features that just don't make any sense. I sell stickers on my website that are just screenshots of the Adobe crash dialog boxes because it's so just ridiculous at this point that you can't work on these softwares, especially in if you're in video, you can't work on them without Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects crashing. And I'm sure you've had the experience with InDesign and Illustrator and Photoshop with just random bugs and crashes that don't make any sense. And then on the alternative side here, Apple is known for not having bugs. It just works. It just works. That's the Apple way. That's why people use an iPhone over an Android. That's what the mainstream person, the normal person who's just using an iPhone, their justification is it just works. Now where I think this gets really interesting with Adobe acquiring Pixelmator is it seems like this is one of the missing puzzle pieces to Apple creating a full-blown Adobe Creative Cloud Suite competitor lineup. <laughs> if you're a video editor, video producer, you have Final Cut Pro for Mac. Way better than Adobe Premiere. Final Cut is so fast. It's lightning fast. It's powerful. I, I can count on my hand how many times I've had an issue with Final Cut in my entire life. I always use it. People say that it doesn't have the functionality of Premiere, but it does. If you're an animator, we have Apple Motion. I've never used that, I'll be honest. I've heard that's kind of limited, but 
they have it. It is a direct competitor to Adobe After Effects. If you work in music or narration, you have Logic Pro, which is a serious competitor to Adobe Audition or any other music app in Adobe's lineup. And even the Mac Preview app is already a better competitor to Adobe Acrobat. You can highlight stuff, you can annotate, you can move pages around, you can sign electronically. All this stuff you can do in Acrobat, but lighter and faster and just way easier and simpler. Apple acquiring Pixel Mater, Pixel to Mater, whatever you want to call it, it makes a lot of sense because this app is already built on the Mac code Swift. It is made for Mac. You can see here on this site, it is integrated with your Photos app already. The Mac Photos app, it has an extension for that. Right here on their main site, they brag about it. They clearly wanted to get bought by Apple. Um, I mean, even their site looks like Apple. Here, designed and built exclusively for Mac. It works with iCloud Drive, the Photos app. It's got universal control, sidecar, which is where you can hook up an iPad. I've got a video on that and you can draw on the iPad. It works with the Apple Pencil on iPad. You can use shortcuts. Somehow, FaceTime is even integrated into Pixelmator. It runs on Apple Silicon, the special Apple computer chip made by Apple for Apple apps. It uses the Apple's graphics processor. It uses the Apple machine learning. It's built with the Apple code. This is a perfect app if you want to use Photoshop Lightroom or Illustrator on your Apple devices. Apple originally built the app Aperture. I think they built it, maybe they bought it, I don't know, but that was a long time ago and that was a photo editing app. And since then it kind of got discontinued and we never heard about it. And I was just talking to my friend the other day about, man, I wish that somebody would just come up with something, just one app, that is a vector app and a raster app, and it just works. Why can't someone do an Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop combination? Can it really be that hard? Pixelmator did this, and Apple acquired it, and I just think this is gonna be game-changing for Adobe users. So, enough talking about it. Let's dive in, let's do this hands-on experience and try this thing out so you can get a look at what Pixelmator is all about and see if it's interesting to you or not. I got the free trial for seven days. Um, I've never used it before. I'll be honest, I never knew this thing existed, which is kind of strange. I don't know, I mean, maybe, I, I guess that's my fault. I didn't know it existed, but I've seriously never heard of this app. I've heard of Affinity, I've used other alternatives to Adobe. I just never, I mean, you got Figma. I, I don't know. I never heard of Pixelmator, but here we are, Pixel Potato. Okay, so they got a couple of demos here. Let's just check one out. Okay, so right off the bat, you open it up. Here's a vector image. You have your layers on this side of the screen. You can turn off and turn on. You can lock them just like you're used to. You've got the text here. Just double click. Grayson's graphics, you can change it. Um, and then on the right side of the screen, you have all of the, your, uh, your panels, your alignment, things like that. And then you have tools. So again, what's really interesting about Pixel Manor is that it's combining Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you what that means. So over here on the side, we have a tool like Color Fill here. You pick this tool, Let's click on one of our layers, click on this hill, and then we select our color. Let's make it just this neon green so it sticks out like a sore thumb. You grab it, boom, you fill it in, okay? Makes sense. Now, let's add a photo. Okay, here's a photo of me trying the Apple Vision Pro. Oh, wow, look, I, so I just dragged and dropped it uh, right into that uh, shape there. I did not mean to do that. Let's grab it back. This is a video of me trying the Vision Pro. Uh, it's on the bottom layer. I'm going to drag it to the top. Here it is. You want to watch this video somewhere, somewhere up here. If we go back to our color field tool, I can grab maybe my wall here and you can see I can start to fill this in. Obviously I'm doing a pretty poor job, but I'm just trying to show you that you can apply the same tools to both photos and vectors in this program which is pretty neat. 
Uh, you even got like your clone stamp tool. Let's say I want to clone my face and put it over here. Now, if you want to work on this photo and use it like Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, tools, color adjustments. As you can see on the right side here, this is gonna look very familiar to you if you work in Lightroom, okay? These are all of your uh, panel adjustments. But I mean, this is comprehensive. I mean, you got levels here, uh, you've got curves, everything that you typically use. There's sharpen, there's grain. All of your typical Lightroom tools are right here, ready to go. It's also got some filters. I wanna show you super resolution. This is comparable to uh, Lightroom's denoise in a way. And you can see right here, you see how it gets a lot sharper from blurry to sharp. So this is clearly using uh, machine learning, which is fine, it's great. Apple uses machine learning all the time, but I think it's safe to predict that Apple will integrate their AI technology into Pixelmator now that they've acquired it. And within like the next update or however long, I'm sure we'll see it. And that will be the real competitor to Lightroom's AI denoise, which if you haven't used that, it's pretty incredible. But they both serve a similar purpose of just taking an image and making it way sharper. Okay, so I pulled in a photo here, another thumbnail. This one, I was using an old 1999 iMac. You can find that video up here too. I'm just using these as references. Up here, you got a quick button to remove background. Boom, just like that, which is pretty sweet. Again, I mean, a lot of this should be familiar. It's Photoshop, it should look like Photoshop. And I think it's done a great job emulating all the tools and things that you need from Photoshop Illustrator and Lightroom into one condensed app. And I think it's going to continue to grow from here. From here, let's add another layer. Let's go underneath. I guess I could put in this rectangle. That looks pretty good. Zoom out a little bit. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's put in another rectangle underneath. Around these corners. I'm just having fun with it. Here's a brush. Oh, I can totally see how this works with the Apple Pen. This is getting very 90s. <laughs> it looks kind of cool. And then we also, for our Illustrator folks, we've got the pen tool here. And you can see. Uh, let me see if I can increase our stroke a little bit. It's good. I mean, it's got everything you need. You can turn into the dash line, just like you can in Illustrator. I also want to open another one of their demos just to show you kind of like what they want, to, want, want you to see. Here's digital painting. So obviously this was done in uh, probably an iPad, I would assume. But again, this is just a, a sick freaking painting. This one's kind of fun. It's uh, giving me a tutorial. It says select the repair tool, try painting over this skater. Let's give it a whirl. We got our repair tool. Boom, that's sick. Let me just turn off our instructions. We need to get rid of his shadow there. Whoa, that's actually insane. That works way better than Illustrator, I mean Photoshop. Holy crap. That, I gotta get a shadow here. That is so much faster and easier than Generative Fill. That's a little wonky, I'll give it that. But now it's just, now it's just a mound. I mean, that's pretty sick though, that looked great. This looks like an Apple thing. Put a little gradient fill over top. Let's add me in there. We'll go to insert, FaceTime. Supposedly you're, geez, three, two. Uh, it's a great picture of me. <laughs> Remove my background. Now supposedly you're supposed to be able to, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm getting so caught up in this thing. Pixel paint, what's that? Oh, that's cool. It's interesting. They got raw photo features here. You can add video. That's what I was trying to say. Supposedly you can add video to this, which could be pretty interesting. Let's add some circular text. Here it is. Subscribe. My favorite thing on Apple is just to go to the help button and just search for what you're looking for. It works for all Apple apps. Beautiful. And now that I'm looking at this, I actually do think this photo needs a little bit of editing. Uh, we did it again. Grayson's Graphics has designed another graphic just for you. <laughs>
Look, at the end of the day, what I really want to tell you is that if you are a creative who has already been using Pixelmator, congratulations because I didn't know this thing existed, and I think your life's about to get a lot more interesting. If you are just an Apple user who stumbled across this channel because I'm the only person that made a video on this Apple acquisition, congratulations because your Photos app on your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac are probably going to be getting Pixelmator's features built right in because they already have that extension created. So it's just gonna be merging those two things. So you don't even have to worry about this app if you don't want it because it's gonna come to your phone. And if you're an Adobe user, well, Congratulations, because you get to now explore some new options. Adobe is great. I hate to rag on it. I use it every single day. I use Adobe every single day. After this video, tomorrow, I'm going to go use Adobe. Okay? It's true. Over the last year with these controversies, I've been trying new apps like Affinity and DaVinci, and I used to only use Premiere Pro, and now I only use Final Cut. And these changes do happen with time as you get introduced to these seeds that get planted. More competition like this means better tools, better prices, and more innovation, which is a good thing for everybody involved and, you know, it kind of reminds me of just this same week, just this past week, ChatGPT announced SearchGPT, which is going to be a direct competitor to Google, just released. I think that'll be very interesting. This is a wild time to be alive in the tech industry, in the creative industry, and if you want to learn more about it, click the subscribe button because I post videos about this type of stuff and design content and graphic design and creative things every single week. Let me know in the comments, are you going to go use Adobe tomorrow or is this changing things for you? What would it take to change you to leave Adobe for something new. I'm very curious about that because I have a few thoughts in my head on what it would take and I'm excited to see if Apple updates Pixelmator to meet my needs. I'll see you in my next video. I post one every single week. See you then. Goodbye.